Welcome to a beautiful day in late June and I'm here out in the woods to talk about one of my favourite trees, the hazel, and particularly identifying the hazel tree in summer. The hazel tree is one of my favourites because not only is it great for all sorts of coppice crafts like hurdle making, basket making and charcoal, but also it produces the beautiful hazel nuts in the autumn which are great in so many wild food recipes. In our summer videos, we're gonna concentrate on the leaves themselves because now they are at their best, they are at their fullest, and we can get a really good look at them. Looking at the hazel leaf, and we've got a typical example here, what strikes me straight away is how round it is. It's a very round leaf, but it also does have a drawn out tip, slightly elongated there, you can see that, and that's quite distinctive. Whereas something like the older leaf, which are generally smaller than this, they don't have that tip. So that's a good way to distinguish between those two. Remember also that the hazel has its leaves laid out alternately along the branch. Looking at this leaf again, it's pretty large as you can see. And typically the leaves can get up to about 10 centimeters um, across. But I've seen them even bigger than this actually. But here's another one that I've just picked alongside. So there's quite a lot of variation in the size as you can see. The leaf itself has a serrated or sawtoothed edge to it. Also, at the base of the leaf, on the short stalk, you will see small little white bristly hairs. Do you remember the hairy hazel that we talked about as a simple rhyme you can use to remember identifying the hazel in winter? Well, think of that again. Those little hairy white bristles are just on the little stalk here. They're quite small, so I'll try and pick them up on the camera for you. But trust me, those white bristles are there on the stalk. But also, the leaf itself has a fuzzy feel to it. It's not a harsh fuzz like Velcro, it's more soft. But particularly on the top of the leaf, it has a fuzzy feel to it. So you can use that sense of touch to help you identify the leaf. Looking on the underside of the leaf, it's a paler green. And also what's quite dominating there are the veins. They're quite strong and prominent and sticking out proud from the leaf itself. It's a bit blowy out today, but I couldn't help but stop by this site here. On our hazel, we've got some unripe nuts in a cluster there. There's five in this cluster, looking great. And it's early July, so it does show that in summer, there is another feature to look out for. Although you're not gonna see it on every tree, the trees have to be of a certain age to bear the nuts. We'll come back in the autumn and get a proper look at them then. Let's get out of this wind. There is one tree species that I think it'd be quite easy to confuse the hazel with at this time of year, and that's the elm. So let's put the two leaves side by side so we can look at the differences. Here's the hazel in my left and the elm in my right. This is a witch elm, by the way. There's not a lot of English elm, if any at all, around here where I am. Now the hazel is immediately a more rounded leaf, whereas the elm is more elongated, more oval-like. They both have a drawn out tip, and they both have a sawtoothed edge to them, although the elm has a more prominent, deeper cut sawtoothed edge than the hazel. They are also both fuzzy to the touch, although the fuzz on the elm is also on the bottom. So if you've got fuzz that you're feeling between your fingertips on both the bottom and top of the leaf, and it's looking elongated, look again at the tree. Is it an elm? Both the elm and the hazel are alternately arranged on the branch with their leaves and buds. So that's another way why it might be easier to confuse them. But go back to the winter ID we did. Look at the bark of the hazel and the other identifying features. Perhaps look for the hazel nuts. Look at the elm video too, and pick out those distinctive features which is gonna help you get the difference there between the two. In the season of summer, it's worth stepping back from the tree like we did in winter, and looking to see if we can recognize the tree from any distinctive shapes from a distance. And with the hazel, it's not so easy because there is so much variation. One thing I will say 
we will see a lot of hazel with the multi stems. Remember that from winter. So look out for that again. The bushy multi stem growth from the base and how it spreads out from the base, generally upwards and outwards. That's typical in coppice plantations. But where trees have been left to their own devices or grow kind of a standard, you're going to see a lot more variation. The hazel is quite a densely leafed tree. It casts quite a bit of shade onto the woodland floor and we can use this to help recognise it looking at the canopy. If we look upward as we are doing now, you'll see quite a dense canopy there, but also those distinctive round shaped leaves with their slightly pointed tips. Look out for those round leaf silhouettes and a messy spreading canopy. Typically, hazel is a messy shrubby tree. You're gonna see it lower in the woodland, more part of the understory, and in hedgerows, of course, and at the woodland edge. And like I say, whenever we're identifying trees, if you're getting any confusion at all, go to a young, fresh, healthy twig, have a look at the young branch, the leaf, and identify it from there. Let's take a moment to have a look at the variations of the shapes of hazel within this area of coppice woodland. In this coppice coop here, there is great variation in the shape of the trees, and that's down to the different forces that have been affecting them and that could be other trees that have grown around them. For instance, we've got one hazel just behind me here, which has grown very long and leggy with a single stem, whereas others have been cut down freshly as a coppice stool and you've got young, bushy, fresh growth. And there's others here which haven't been cut for a long time and have bushed out and grown more like an elongated, unkempt hedge. Just beside me, we have a young coppice stool. This was cut just in February this year and what you see here is the regrowth from just those few months since. As I said, it's late June now. And you can see how this coppice stool is really growing up and taking advantage of the light that has been created by this clearing that we've made here. But if we compare this to the mature hazel trees, there's a really a lot of difference that you could expect to see in a woodland, particularly a woodland that's being managed. What's really noticeable about these young hazel twigs, this regrowth, is that hairy hazel feature again. Those hairs, those bristles, are very prominent on these young stems. And these young stems also don't have a lot of woodiness or strength to them yet. They're still quite soft, much more like you would get just on an annual or biennial plant. They've yet to thicken up and really get woody. And of course, as they get older, they will do that because they're gonna have to support a lot more weight. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is an area of woodland where I ran a coppicing course back in February. And as well as cutting down the stools in order to encourage them to regrow, we also tried out another traditional woodland management technique called layering. Now, layering is a technique you can use with hazel in order to increase the density of the trees in an area of woodland. The reason why you might want to make them more dense is because if they're too far apart, the growth of the hazel will spread out too much, whereas if they're closer together, they will be forced upwards towards the light and you get more of those nice straight hazel rods, which are perfect for coppice crafts. So getting the right density is important. And in order to do that, we practice layering here and it's worked really well, which is great to see. This is how it works. Just like hedge laying, you cut through the stem of hazel almost all the way through, but leave a thin bit just under the bark in order for the nutrients to carry on going through the tree. Because of course the life of the tree is on the outside, just under the bark, whereas the middle of the tree, the heartwood, is usually dead and it's just there for structure and strength. So you cut through that stem almost all the way and you lay it down, hence the layering. You lay it down away from the tree and where you want the new tree to grow, you dig a little trench and then you put that branch in the ground, cover it over a little bit of soil and peg it down. And you peg it down usually with a little crook of hazel, a hook that you've made from the various bits of wood that you've cut that day. And what should happen is that where it touches the ground, the tree will reroot and create a new tree, a clone of its neighbor. The wood that is connected to the old tree will eventually rot and split and it will spring up in the air one day, hopefully when there's nobody about and the new tree will be separate and it will reroot and you'll be able to get more hazel coppice and product from that 
in years to come. And it's worked really well here. We did it on a few different stems of hazel and you can see the regeneration already even after just a few months. So I'd like to come back every year or so as well and see if those hazel trees have continued to grow and thrive. So layering, a way to create trees for free in your woodland. If you need any proof as to how coppicing is great for biodiversity and generating microhabitats within the woodland, then here it is. We've got an orchid down here, and this orchid has responded to the increased light that's been created by the coppicing we've done here. It's sprung up under the right conditions, and hopefully it will thrive. And in the next few years, I hope to see more orchids in this patch. Hazel is one of those trees that has kind of fallen from grace and I mean that in a very kind of sad way because years ago it was so much more used, so much more venerated and important in our society for all the traditional coppice products. Before we started digging out coal, charcoal was what people would use for forging all the metal works of the day. So the charcoal produced from hazel was one of those most sought after and most used and of course everybody were heating their homes by firewood as well. And of course with the industrial revolution and then the two world wars, wooden management has changed so much and the hazel, the importance of it, has really kind of fallen from uh, the commonplace which is a shame because hazels were harvested for bean poles, pea sticks, for faggot wood, firewood, charcoal, hazel hurdles, basket making, making walkways, all kinds of things and of course for sheep hurdles as well for agriculture and farming. So it's a shame that Hayes has lost its position there. Uh, I would like to see it come back and be used more because it's such a fantastic sustainable resource that we have here and of course the more that woodlands are managed the more biodiversity we're going to get and the more woodlands will be appreciated and valued and if we value the woodland we're all going to look after them a lot more. Perhaps with this ongoing search for alternative fuels and more sustainable way of living, we will see in the future the return of the hazel in its importance to our common everyday life. I certainly hope so. Well, that about wraps it up for identifying the hazel tree in the season of summer. I hope you found it useful and we've got just one more season to go. We're going to come back to our hazel in autumn and have a look at the culmination, the fruits of its labours throughout the year and see what it produces. So we'll see you then. Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope it's piqued your interest to find out more about the beautiful native tree species that we have here in Britain. But before you go, I wanted you to know that this video is actually just a taster of a much larger tree identification video course that I've created for people just like you. The full course covers over 50 tree species that you'll commonly find here in the UK and we look at those tree species in all four seasons starting in winter to spring, summer, and then finally autumn. In each season, we're gonna be picking out those distinctive features, which means you'll be able to identify the tree no matter the time of year. As well as videos like you've seen today, the full course also includes hundreds of photos, you're gonna get questionnaires on tree species, and you'll also receive a certificate at the end of the whole course. Let me help you see the wood from the trees as I take you from tree beginner to tree expert. To find out more, simply follow the link in the description below and you'll also get access to two more free Tree ID videos as a preview. So, you're just one click away from becoming a tree expert. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you again in the woods.